Welcome to TriStar Digging. I appreciate you joining us today. We got a little project here. It's a continuation of a project that we uh, previously done, building a retaining wall. Today, what we're gonna be starting is um, about where that transit is up there. I'm gonna come back this side of that, and I'm gonna go down four inches, or five inches, and I'm gonna bring, cut five inches of dirt out at a one and a half percent grade, all the way out to this area right here, where it'll daylight out. I'm gonna put a six inch drain in the very middle of that uh, and get that water to drain. Then all this will be covered with 57s and that's gonna look really nice. And uh, as I get this done, you'll see the retaining wall project as I left it on another video. So by the time this video's done, that retaining wall will all be dressed up. All this will be looking good and you'll see me put in all these drains. And I've got a little bit of road repair too. You can see some washed out areas, some rough areas up there. My excess dirt I'll be using on the property here to kind of patch some areas. So let's get to work. All right, I'm ready to get started. And uh, this is probably one of the better videos that I've done that really shows the capabilities of the Trimble Earthwork system that I have on the CAT 304 and also the uh, top con laser that I use. It's a dual slope laser. So this job, what I'm gonna do, and I'll explain in just a minute as I set up Trimble Earthworks and the Topcon laser, but just give you an overview of what I'm doing here is uh, this is gonna be my benchmark where my bucket is now because we have enough grade from the house out to this point right here where the water is leaving anyway. So what we wanna do is just make a uniform slope from here down to where the skid steer is so that the water will flow away really well. And I'm gonna belly it just a little bit off the sides of these walls so that the water will get underneath the 57s, the rock I'll put on it, and head over to the middle, hit that drain that I'm gonna put in, and go out. So I'm gonna put a one and a half percent slope uh, from where my bucket is to where it daylights out down at the bottom. And what I'll use Trimble Earthworks for is I'll set my benchmark there, and then I'll set a five inch offset so that I'm digging below my grade by five inches because I'm gonna fill it back up with five inches of uh, 57. All right, let's set this up. Uh, first of all, what we're gonna do is we'll set up the uh, Topcon laser, and it is a RLSV2S. Basically, that 2S means it's a dual slope. So to do that, we'll go into the XY axis. This is the X axis on this laser, and this is the Y axis coming towards me. So I'll go down here to the Y axis, which is there, and then I will uh, hit enter. And because I'm wanting to come sloping from here down, I'm, I want to do a plus, a plus 2%. So I'll scroll over to the uh, number here and get that to 2%. And then I hit enter. And you'll saw, I don't know if you saw it or not, but that laser stops spinning. It's making its adjustments. And now it's gonna drop that laser beam from this angle. It's gonna, I'm exaggerating it it's going to drop it down two percent but my mistake is i wanted one and a half so i got to change that so let's go back in here and uh change that to a one and a half percent all right there we go hit the enter and now then it's setting it up so now let's go in here and set uh, trimble earthworks up and we'll, I'll explain how that all that's gonna work together. All right, we're gonna set up Trimble Earthworks and it's already got it to this point right here and it's asking for a bench mark required. So I'll go into the settings, hit the uh, benchmark setting. I'll go in here and because my bucket's already right there, that is my benchmark. That is what I want my grade to be uh, and then pull one per one and a half percent all the way out. So I'll come back to the screen and uh, hit bench. And now then, that has set my benchmark at that location. Now then, because I want to do a five inch offset, I'll go back into settings, go in here to elevation offset, hit that. And then I want a negative uh, offset, which drops me down below my grade. You can also set a positive, which is above your grade, but we're gonna do a negative 5.0 and then we'll hit the uh, apply. 
apply. So now then, these red marks right here are showing me that that's how far I've got to go down to get into this green mark uh, to get me down to where I need to be digging. Let's go over how this actually works. So you saw the screen there, and that's the computer part of Tremble Earthworks. And that's the brains of the outfit, really. So all the sensors that are on the machine, they send back readings to the uh, computer on where we're digging and, and how far we need to dig and things like that. Now then sensors, there is a sensor that reads the location of the, the body and it's inside the, this little door here. There's a sensor on the boom. There's a sensor on the stick and then there's a sensor on the dog bone. Also, there's a laser catcher. That's why I set up the Topcon laser. That laser catcher will be used each time I move locations in the excavator. Reason being is that this is not a 3D GPS system. It is a 2D system that the computer only knows what it's doing when it's sitting in a static position. Once I move, the machine, the computer doesn't know that I've moved. So I have to tell them the computer that I've moved. And the way I do that is by using that laser. That laser is set up on a one and a half percent grade at a constant location. So each time I move, what I do is I dip this laser catcher down into the laser beam and then that recalibrates the computer of where the excavator's at at that moment now for instance if this was a 3d gps system uh it's it's getting readings all the time where it's setting at there's another way of doing this without the laser it's called touch point each time you get ready to move you reach over and touch a specific point you push a button you make your move, you put your bucket back on that specific location and hit the button again. That will tell the computer that it's moved as well and it'll recalibrate for that. All right, that was a mouthful. If you got any questions about that, send me a comment. I'll be glad to answer any questions about Tremble Earthworks or the Top Gun Laser as best I know. So uh, let's get to digging. Got that dug out now and we now have a consistent one and a half percent slope from where i started which is right in there all the way down here to where it daylights out and it is five inches below grade so now then uh after i get the sides dug out um, i'm going to put in a six inch slotted drain right down the center here that'll be about uh i'm going to dig it probably eight inches deep put that six inch pipe in it and then there'll be five, six, seven inches of rock over the top of that. So now what I want to do is I want to, uh, from the bottom of the retaining wall there, I want to slope it from there over to the middle of this ditch that I just dug out, which will give us a belly. And then the water will drain down that belly, hit that six inch and come down this way. This is where a tilt grading bucket would come in really, really handy. And in order to get a tilt grading bucket for this machine and put a sensor on it, to uh, work with Tremble Earthworks, I'm looking at about $7,500, $8,000. Um, I'll figure out a way to get this done without that. First is keep this uh, track, this lower track inside this ditch and as close over to the bank as I can. That'll give me enough tilt uh, that I should be able to start my grade and uh, hopefully that'll work out, get me over to the to the wall where I want to be. If not, then I'll use a skid steer. I'll come back in after I get all this hogged out. I'll come in and fine tune it with the skid steer.
Well, you can see that was working pretty good, uh, but my angle was a little too steep. Uh, so what I'm gonna try now is get the skid steer and uh, try to hog that out with the skid steer. And uh, just maintain my, my main thing is just maintain my center ditch here, my one half percent slope, because all the water's gonna slope down into that anyway. So let's try the skid steer, see how it works. That'll take care of it for today. I got everything that gets away from this wall here and got that wall cleaned out over there. And uh, it's taking shape, looking pretty good. And day's Friday, I'm done. And I'll be back here Monday, see you then. Good Monday morning. We are back on this job and uh, let's get to work. We've got a little bit of a 
we've got a little bit of dirt to move out of here uh, to get all this loose dirt out and then finish grading this down to where we can uh, get ready to start digging the uh, drainage system in. And look at him, Gary Price trucking, bringing us some dirt. Hold on, Sammy. How you doing? All right. I'm getting the Topcon laser set up here with a one and a half percent slope. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, you can see my white line right here. I'm gonna dig an eight inch ditch. It'll be 12 inches wide in my bucket. And then I'm gonna put a six inch slotted pipe in there. And then there'll be two inches of rock immediately covering the top of that pipe in that ditch. But then there'll also be about five inches of rock on top of that to level out between this retaining wall here and this retaining wall over here. We will run through setting up this Tremble Earthworks to do that. Hit the start button. It's got my previous benchmark in there, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna hit benchmark. I'm gonna clear that. And now then I need a new benchmark. So what I'm gonna do is take my bucket and reach back out there and touch where my ditch is gonna be. It's going to be the top of my ditch so i want to do eight inches below that so what i'll first do is hit this button that gives me my bench elevation go into settings go into elevation offset and i'm going to do a negative let me get into this screen right here do a negative 8.0 inch offset and then hit apply one other thing that I've got to do is change out my buckets because so I went from a 48 inch grading bucket, which you see right there. So I'll go into attachments. I'll select a 12 inch bucket like that. And then I'll hit the select and we're ready to dig. The reason you go in and change your attachment is because there's different depths and lengths of teeth um, that grading bucket is shallower than this 12 inch bucket so all that goes into play when his computer is trying to tell me what how deep this ditch needs to be dug so i'm gonna set y'all up on time lapses to dig this ditch and uh we'll get it done
I got buried in that. <laughs> okay, here we are at the end of this day, and uh, now I've got this ditch dug all the way out to where it daylights out down here in the woods. And uh, I dug that eight inches deep down to this area right in here, but there's some tractor traffic he'll be going in out with the tractor there so i went ahead and dug that down uh 16 inches just to get that a little bit lower to handle the tra tractor traffic back and forth across that ditch and then where the gutters where the gutter down spouts and uh the drain behind the wall i've got this dug in now starting up there at the wall all the way down here to where it daylights out in the woods and that'll just be a hard pipe there. That won't be a slotted pipe. It's just going to drain water away from the gutters and the behind the wall. I'll tie that in up here. Also got the topsoil that Gary brought me today. I got that all worked around, all the way around the edge of the wall now. Got that material cut away from the wall. Got all this dressed up here. So that part right there is finished. It looks really nice. It turned out really nice. That'll be a, that will look really good with grass on it. And Gary brought me 44 ton of rock, two loads. And so I will be able to start putting that in the area here as soon as I get the pipe in down the middle. Then I'll be able to start filling all this with rock. And we're gonna fill it in all the way down to the edge of the barn there. And all the way back up here to where the edge of the parking area is. So that's gonna take care of today. I will see y'all in the morning. Well, good morning. We are back to get this job finished up today and uh, making some progress already this morning. I got this. This is where the gutter drain was coming out yesterday. I got that gutter drain tied in. Got the wall drain set out right here. And that uh, gutter drain is now in. Six inch solid corrugated pipe. Runs all the way down into the woods there. Got that kind of roughed in and covered up. And then I got this uh, big old 100 foot snake right here to get straightened out it's cold this morning i don't want to straighten out at all that first one didn't either what i'm going to do is put that up here at the uh up here at the house and that'll dead end right here and then uh lay that pipe in that ditch all the way down through there and i'll backfill it with rock and then uh, get all this area filled in with rock so let's get started a few minutes uh, scraping off the rock the existing rock that was here on this uh, pad area uh, Jack wanted to refresh that uh, look of that rock so I got all that scraped off and used that as the belly in the belly of my uh, area here so I got that older rock in there and then I'm gonna come back and top dress everything and fill this in with that clean rock and that's what I'm doing now is uh, trying to get that clean rock all in here and uh, make this look nice
So I'm spreading this rock. I'm gonna show you a little technique I use to uh, get rock or dirt or whatever uh, really up close to the wall. So what I do, rather than going, take the skid steer, run straight down the wall, because you really can't get the rock next to the wall as close as you want to. So what I do is I'm back and I'm turning the skid steer at an angle, but I'm keeping this butt side of the bucket over here, I'm keeping that against the wall or whatever it is. And as I back out, I can, I'm able to spin that rock or dirt, whatever the case may be, right against the edge of what I'm doing. So on this next uh, couple buckets, you'll see what I'm doing. By doing that, I'm spinning the skid steer out away from the wall, but I'm keeping that closest edge to the wall. When you do it that way, the way I've learned to do it, there's very little raking to do now because that rock is all the way up against that wall. And you can do the same thing uh, if you are got your bucket on the ground and you're trying to push rock or dirt over against something, you can do the same thing, keep the bucket on the ground and keep the this upper tooth, keep it against the wall or whatever it is as you spin out away from it, you can do the same thing with the bucket on the ground. I'm gonna show you how that I do that. So you see I've got a little bit of a gap right here that there's no rock. So if you got a little bit of pile in front of there, I'm gonna show you how to put that tooth down and spin that tooth around that wall to get that to fill in against that crack. The only thing about this is you gotta be careful and you gotta practice this because that tooth, obviously sharp, and whatever, if you're against a house or a basement or, or even this uh, retaining wall block, if, you're, if you don't practice this, you'll cut that tooth into the side of what you're trying to put dirt up against and do a lot of damage. Trust me, been there. look all the way down through here I've got rock very little raking to do because I've got that rock all the way up against that stone now a few little tricks of trades to save you time and save you a lot of handwork I got all that topsoil cleaned up now where Gary brought me that load of topsoil and uh, got all that rock cleaned up now those two loads of rock I think it's 44 ton total Got all that spread in here now. And uh, I think you've already seen this where I got that dressed up on the right side of the retaining wall. And I got all the rock replaced in here in the middle. Uh, you saw me putting in that drain in the middle, so that's gonna work great. And then this wall is uh, backfilled now. I got the, the drain pipe finished up and got all the dirt back in here behind it. And then what Jack's gonna do here is dress this up a little bit and then he's gonna put his pea gravel back on this to go with his uh, Japanese garden he's got over there. And uh, on around the back side here, I brought uh, some rock all the way to the little pole barn here, dressed up all this area. This is where all the spools went, took it back there and filled in a ditch over here on this side and then uh, dressed that other up over there and cleaned up these woods. So as I mentioned in that retaining wall video, uh, the first part of this job, uh, I wanted to show you the retaining walls as they were finished. So. They are done now, you got a chance to see that. So go back and watch that video if you hadn't already before I first started this job. Got those retaining walls started and, uh, but they are complete now. This job is done, it's in the books. So I appreciate you watching and stick around for the message if you will. All right, I appreciate you joining us for the video. Got all that taken care of, got all that rock in there and all the drains fixed and the walls done. And uh, so I appreciate you watching it. And I appreciate you sticking around for the message. And in this message today, this is gonna help us out with a real world example of what I'm gonna talk about in the scripture. So I've got three pieces of bacon here. And there's probably only one other fella I'd sh share my bacon with, and that's Diesel. Uh, so I want you to watch what he does when I give him this bacon. So if you'll notice there what he does, he will sniff that bacon to make sure that it's good to eat. And also at the same time, he's testing it to make sure that it's good for his body. Because he don't want to take anything into his mouth there that he doesn't taste good. 
And then secondly, he certainly don't want to take anything in that's poison or would make him sick. So let's give him another piece and you watch that. Even though I'm giving him the same bacon, he's still going to sniff it to make sure it's okay. So just for that brief second there, he sniffed it to test that bacon to make sure it's good. Let's give him some more. <laughs> he loves that bacon. So one more time, he's going to sniff it and then he's going to eat it. It don't take you long to sniff it because he wants to eat that bacon. Now then, the point I want to make is that same thing is true in our spiritual life, in our physical life in this world. What we take into our body, what we take into our mind, we first of all want to make sure that it's good for us, and then secondly, make sure that it's safe for us to consume. And here I'm talking about spiritual things. I'm talking about the Word of God and the truth of God and how that we take that in. And I want to say this and be very clear, and I'll talk about it just a little bit more in just a minute. Everybody that mentions the name of Jesus, everybody that talks about Jesus, everybody that talks about God, we're not all talking about the same thing. So just because somebody mentions the name of God or mentions the name of Jesus, you need to test and see to make sure that what they're saying is accurate according to what the Word of God says. First, I want to talk about is what Diesel did there. He tasted it to see that it was good before he would eat it. So in Psalms 34, 8, it says this. It says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. In verse 10, it says this, The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. So as that passage of Scripture talks about there, it's calling us to taste and see that the Lord is good. And, and for you to do that for yourself and to find the hope and trust in Jesus Christ that the Word of God is talking about by trusting in him. And secondly, it's testing the spirit, testing to see what somebody's saying or for yourself that what you're being told is of God. And the way to do that, we find that in 1 John chapter 4, 1 through 6, and it says this, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. This is crucial and very important to understanding this. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God because there are so many people, so many religions in the world that would say Jesus is a good man, he's a good prophet, he's a good teacher. They don't deny the existence of Jesus Christ, but what they deny is the fact that Jesus is of God, that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus was fully God and fully man. So let me continue there in verse 3 and it says this, And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. So there's two ways to test. If they deny that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, if they deny that Jesus Christ is God, then they are not of God. That's what the scripture says. So I, I encourage you to, as the first part of the message said, I encourage you to taste and see that the Lord is good. There's a lot of things being offered to you in this world today that, that may taste good, that may look good, that may smell good, but there's only one thing that can save you, and that's the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's the sacrifice that he made on the cross for you and for me. I hope that you've already done that. If you haven't, I hope that you would consider that and, and place your faith and trust in Christ for the forgiveness of your sins that you might have eternal life in heaven. So God bless you. And I appreciate you watching.